This is preparation of DMAC tissue unedited and with time. Here I am creating the sclerosporectomy and the aim of this is to remove the excess and sometimes densely pigmented tissue if you've got a darker donor and sometimes that tissue can fragment and spread little pieces of pigment all throughout the view which can make it a little bit annoying. I'm now assessing the quality of the tissue by adding Vision Blue. You only need a few drops and only needs to be on there for a few seconds. I'm gently wicking off the excess fluid and we're quite lucky here in that the tissue we have is quite good quality as given by our eye bank today. I'm gently placing some balanced salt solution onto the surface, always with a dripping manner so as not to squirt or have high turbulence across the surface because we don't want to be losing any endothelial cells. I'm now using a Rootman Sloan laser co and I'm gently separating and working my way around in a 360 degree manner the separation between the decime membrane and endothelium and the stroma. This, as I said at the beginning of the video, is unedited to give my fellows a sense of the time that you could reasonably expect to focus on each step of this procedure. Sometimes a separation step at this point can be quite sticky, so it's really important that you are on the lookout for any stray tags. If there are any stray tags which don't come away nicely, then I often find switching to having some vanners on board to trim the little adhesions can be quite helpful. And this is really important because when you're trying to fold the tissue in half in the next step, those other tractional bands can actually be the source of other tears. I'm now coming up to the end of the 360 degree first round. I'm fairly confident in this instance that we've separated most of the tissue as it's come away quite nicely. In most other circumstances, however, I will go around a second time just to check that my tissue is free of any adhesions for a second time round. I've got a pair of curved tires here and I'm using them as flatly as possible to gently encourage the tissue off to separate. You'll notice that my non-dominant hand is simply using the thumb to support the base of the trephination set so that it doesn't move. I'm not holding the base of that trephination set because it causes unnecessary additional traction. My end point is getting just across that halfway point of where the central aperture or the hole is at the trephination base. I'm wicking off any excess fluid and this just allows my transplant to sit nicely in a targo formation without accidentally running into this area where I'm about to punch. You'll notice that I place the fold orientation so that I'm able to punch between the two smaller holes and this allows me to create a complete cut with no risk of any incomplete edges which makes it quite challenging to open. I use balanced salt solution to float the tissue back into position and now I'm going to place it upright after working off any additional fluid. This step is incredibly important, although minor. And the reason, or seemingly minor I should say, and the reason for that is because I don't want any additional fluid to be seeping in within this central aperture which I'm trying to dry. At this step you will find that you will use a number of dry spears or wax cells because in the dry form it fits neatly inside that aperture. I'm focusing really on the edges of the base of that aperture because this is the point where fluid is most likely to seep in. So you will take a little bit of time with this step and you will use a few wax cells to make sure it's completely dry. The worst thing you can do is to hasten this step and if fluid leaks in whilst you're trying to make your stamp or ink, that ink will spread and will make it quite challenging for you. It is possible 
to pop the membrane. So you do need to be a little bit careful at that step. Here I'm now using a fine tipped marker to make an F formation with a period at the bottom right hand corner. I'm bracing my hand with the lateral aspect of my little finger on the table so that I have as much support as possible. It is quite a small area that you're putting this inking in. This period that I'm placing is probably the most important step of the F sign because when you have poor visibility, this dot is what will allow you to orientate the tissue, particularly when things are starting to run. What you don't see now here is I'm using the edge of the plastic sterile girder packet to provide some fanning assistance to allow the ink to dry. This step is also quite important because I don't want the ink to run when I flip the tissue back into its original orientation. You can assess a tissue for dryness by looking at the reflex if you want. I'm now orientating the tissue where the F sign is between two of those holes, the smaller ones, again so that when my trephine comes down it's included and I get a complete cut. I'm tapping fairly firmly here, depending on the variety of trephine. You really want to make sure you have a fairly complete cut through decimates, but not through the stroma, although if you do get a complete cut through the stroma, it's not, not a big issue. Here I'm gently adding a few drops of vision blue because I want to see the edge of the trephination step. This allows me to make sure that it's been a fairly complete cut. And again, I place some balance salt solution. And as you can see, it allows the peripheral tissue to be lifted off gently without dragging over the tissue that I've just carefully prepared. At this step, I'm now lifting off the area where the F was because I know that that tissue has already been elevated. This technique is very similar to the original lifting technique. Again, I'm watching for any certain folds that might indicate an area of traction and I'm using a Rex's technique to complete the separation. You want to get rid of the balance salt solution and I'm here poised with two dry spears. Usually I would use this in the radial configuration, but as this tissue is quite flaccid, I'm not needing to orientate that too much. In fact, in this case, it appears to be a little bit adherent to the base by surface tension. At this point, I'm adding just enough ink in the form of Vision Blue to cover the tissue, and I wait for two minutes to stain. The staining at this step allows you to orientate the tissue in terms of its centration in the eye. If I had a patient with darker eyes or where I feel that the visibility might be further compromised by a scar, or if I have a feeling that it's going to be a trickier or longer case for any reason, then I will stain for an additional minute because as the tissue is moving around inside the eye, it can lose its stain and the centration of it becomes a little bit more challenging in this case. You'll see here that I'm now poised ready. Usually I would use two dry spears in this case. When I'm talking about using it radially, what I mean is using the two spears to be positioned at the long end of the cylindrical scroll. And this means that it's less likely to unfold. You'll find that the tissue, particularly when it's sort of semi-flaccid, will want to unfold in the direction because the tissue was drawn in that way and sometimes it can unfurl the scroll that you have. In this instance, my donor tissue is a little bit older. By older, we just mean older in age, not older in storage time necessarily. And because of its flaccidity, it does give me an indication that the tissue is likely to unfold quite nicely inside the eye. And this is one of the main benefits of knowing how to prepare your own tissue. 
You'll see here, because I know the tissue is quite flaccid and at one point was more or less wanting to sit on the bottom and less likely to jump towards my sphere, I'm gently removing that excess ink and now again encouraging the tissue into a scroll configuration with a few well-placed drops of balanced salt solution and removing any excess little bits of tissue that might get into the interface and cause my tissue not to stick. I use the curved end of the tires to elevate one end and I aspirate the tissue into the girder tube. Thanks for watching.